What would you say your biggest frustrations are when it comes to building your business online? I'm not a business person. That yep. is my biggest frustration. It's the organization of the various things that you have to do and the, um, yeah, figuring out how to do it, like to put structure in it and not lose yourself. I don't know if there's a word in Italian or German for shiny object syndrome. Have you heard of it? <laughs> no, but it sounds exactly right. How to put the word out about the sort of content that I'm creating and attract the audience I'm looking for. You can find almost every answer on YouTube yeah. about what you're looking for. But it's a huge waste of time. It's like opening the kind of worms. And everybody's saying the same thing, but giving you little bits of pieces, like a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> they, they break it down so that they can have more videos and more content. So that's definitely helping, like paying for a course that where somebody can break it down and just tell you in an hour or two. Right. These are the steps that you need to follow instead of going through a million. Um, YouTube videos on Facebook ads, which is what I did at the beginning. <laughs> oh, I so many of us did that. That's that's why I, it took so long to grow because I was like, I'll find it myself. I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I realized, hey, other people have done this. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just follow one system. And it's just, it's been a lot easier since I've taken courses too. So what is your biggest fear about growing your business online? That I won't have the time to invest in it. Marketing it and also producing enough ads because ad takes time. Spending too much money and wasting it. Starting with high prices. So yeah, pricing is another issue that comes up a lot. Well, one of the ones that I really struggle and maybe you've heard this before, it's pricing. I see it with my partner. Um, he's a carpenter. He's an excellent carpenter. When he shows up and he says that he's charging $60 an hour, nobody ever blinks. They're like, oh, yeah, no worries. Yep. You know? But if I were to say somebody, to somebody that I'm making 60 an hour to make a piece of jewelry that took 12 hours, nobody would pay me for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, some people would. You just need to reach a different demographic when pricing comes up, which is almost so many artists have this issue because they enjoy doing the work and they would do it for free. So they're okay mm -hmm. accepting less. And then we're also conditioned as artists that art is not really as important as, you know, being a lawyer or a doctor or even a carpenter, you know, like they're tangible. They make things that people use, but with art, it's, it's different. You're kind of, transmuting consciousness into something that um, progeny and future generations are going to be able to like the art that's being made now during a pandemic that's I think that'll be revered one day if you do um, screenwriting or you make paintings or you're a dancer or you make jewelry like this is this is really important stuff so that's the aspect of pricing is like one your work is worth it two if you know what the market is like and what other high-end jewelry designers, for example, are charging, then you price yourself in that area. And if something doesn't sell, you either raise it or lower the price. You know, you kind of let the market determine that. But the first thing is just getting over that some people are going to go, who does she think she is charging this, you know? Yeah. I the, that's not your people. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely get that. So when you find someone who is not pricing their their product correctly or their art correctly what's what's one of the advice or what do you tell them or what's well what's, what's so crazy advice? what's so crazy is that when i thought when i started working with clients i thought i'd really be teaching them more skill set related things how to do technical things and how to um you know grow on pinterest or whatever and what i end up teaching a majority of the time is almost giving people permission to charge what they're worth, to work on what they want to work on and to outsource what they don't want to work on. 
So let's say that you have the career going in the direction that you want it to go and your life and business is is where you've been working towards having. And I think I think that was a verbose way to describe your perfect business and career life. What what does your life and business look like if that was all going the way you wanted it to? Hmm. Well, if I had all my shit together, I would have two assistants. <laughs> two I would assistants. have I would have a virtual assistant, at okay. least one, at least one. If I like, let's just assume money is not a problem. Maybe right. I would have two, like in my dreams, somebody to control like Facebook and like a content manager. Yeah. And then, um, I would have someone to run my website and then all I would be doing is blog posts and creating videos for my as yet non-existent YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah. I think I would have a workshop that is outside my place, like mm -hmm. in a different place. And I would teach people more than like I would produce but not many things but like better and fewer things maybe and sell them for more money it's a large studio that I built myself that has a wonderful view somewhere <laughs> that it's kind of divided in two like one is a jewelry production and then the other one it's my own art studio yeah i think the idea of bringing people in house is to help me with the part that i'm doing now which is a lot right. just like from updating websites in social media i don't know writing a blog blog post right photographing it, scheduling a, a photo shoot is definitely a lot for someone who also likes painting Sounds like you need an operations manager. I have this machine constantly running um, and that I have people running that machine for me and I'm just producing. What if software ran that machine for you? Uh, great. Then okay. it, it would save a lot of time and money. Yep. You can do <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like there is no software that I've been able to find. There is. Is there? Yes, there's um, the marketing automation. There's so many different things you can do with integrations. It's insane. If you can systemize it, that's really going to be the way that you can scale really big. I like to highlight native species and their importance to um, ecosystems, the preservation and health of ecosystems. Um, so I would hope that you know, like I'd either have like an organization that I'd be working with or multiple organizations that I'm working with to spread the word, natural history museums, scientists, academic journals. My big goal is New York Times, like the cover, but who, who doesn't have that goal? The ability to be calm and not worry too much about money, <laughs> like take vacations, you know? Yeah, uh, not have to go, well, time to make a tough choice because of finances. Do you want to have a TED Talk too? I would love to have a TED Talk. Let's say you were to die tomorrow. This is very morbid. What do you hope people say about you and your work? Maybe that it made them less um, depressed and more wanting to change themselves in order to be happier. I would love it if someone who's struggling with a mental illness told me or said to anyone that I had given them strategies or maybe just courage to keep on trying different things and pushing through. If it inspired someone to work on a new piece of music or believe that they could create opportunities for themselves as a musician, then that would be great. He was tenacious. Okay. Uh, and he left a whole bunch of shit to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> I was moved by her work and it has inspired me to do X, Y, and Z. Would X, Y, and Z be um, make their own kind of work or make some other sort of impact that's not even related to art? My work has a lot to do with connecting uh, with ourselves and others. And so 
has a lot to do with human connection and shifting perception on who we are. I just want people to remember me for that, for bringing people together through art. When I thought about that question for me, I thought I want to help people evolve. And I didn't Mm -hmm. really realize how much people related that to human connection and how Mm -hmm. important it is more than evolution sometimes to just just in the moment bring people together i thought that was really beautiful what is one thing you feel like you're missing about growing your creative business online just driving traffic traction collaboration connection uh, connection to other artists and especially connection between female artists artists i think i'm not really um getting my, my audience, my target audience. I understand a lot of time on Instagram, trying to figure out or um, link it in, what can I do Yeah. to get followers and really get my target market. I'm not sure how to bring in more people. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. And I would love to because I think that what I'm putting out there is beneficial. Yeah. Um, and, I, and that's really my goal is I want to be a resource. I want to lift up other performing arts organizations. Is there anything that you're struggling with with growing your business online that we haven't talked about yet? The main issue is the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I have like literally no time without the kids. Yeah, it's a time issue. I love being busy and I love the work that I'm doing, but... It's a lot, <laughs> and I don't, and I don't want to get burnt out. You know, doing things that I enjoy that's not the plan. <laughs> yeah, I think we have similar fears too, because you said that your main fear is that you'll you won't have time. That's always been my biggest fear. I think having all these different uh, management time management systems has really, really helped me to feel like I I'm probably the most productive person I know. I'm almost positive. And it's because of time management systems. Let's say that you could wave a magic wand and create some sort of dream program that gave you all the different direction with um, how you need to market your work and support that you need and how to grow. Just everything that you're looking for in a program to grow your creative business. What would that program look like? Like a full boot camp within the next maybe six months. If you can do it in six months, amazing. If not a year. And within that time, you have access to somewhere, someone who can answer questions. I don't really think that it would be like, because I kind of saw like how you had your calendar area set up and it was just kind of like step by step things. Like, Mm -hmm. I think it would be really cool to have it like, like user interface like to where you could like see all these different topics and then just kind of click on it and then you can learn more about it like but then like in a cool or I don't know like a flowy way community I think is so important especially because when when it comes to make art I think there's a lot of solitarian artists I would love like to have um personal like an actual person right that you can talk to to have a proper reflection of the work you've done and the work you still have to do and that has also the knowledge to help you work out better these things Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to placing your stuff in the real world i think especially in this day and age for creatives people like the connection even if it's this um and so um, having a hybrid of, um, okay, we're going to have this talk, blah, blah, and here's all the things we're going to go over, and here's the checklist for you to go work on yeah, so that we can all hold each other responsible and accountable when we come back in X number of weeks, days, hours. Finding people around you that are doing the same thing and can share ideas and strategies, it was, it's really invaluable. So community. Uh, yeah, definitely. You have a group of people that you work with every month and you meet every month and then you check and it's like, okay, so what have you been doing? And it's like a brainstorming 
ideas and you set a plan a goal for that month and like people will ask you about it. No, you have to meet with your oh, friends. Exactly, like accountability groups. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My thought was before when I first started making this um this course was I'm very independent. I don't really need accountability as much. And then I realized, hey, I get more done when I tell someone I'm gonna do it. Even I'm like, I, I don't want to put pressure on people. No, the point is to create programs and products and things and content that transforms people, that helps people. So if accountability helps every almost I don't I don't know anyone that it doesn't help, then why wouldn't you do it? What would you be willing to invest in your dream program that had all the aspects that you were looking for? Over five thousand dollars. I think I would pay a few grand for it. Like a thousand bucks for the knowledge power. I would say like a, up to a 30% of my um, income. If it had everything in it and it got exactly what I wanted, I'd be willing to spend 10, 15,000. For me, education is, uh, is an investment. Right. Yeah. I always think for me, it's like if I put in 15,000, what is that 15,000 going to turn into 30, 40 in the long run? Um, exactly. This is something else that um, the, as a business person that I notice a lot of artists do not understand or a lot of people in general is opportunity cost. Okay. So that month that you spent a thousand dollars, how much would you be losing by not doing that? And if you, you know, it's usually more than that investment, but then again, I mean, you really have to be discerning about the type of investments. There's so many different things that you could invest in, in your business. Okay, so then this is the last question. So fill in these blanks, right? So I want to go from where you are now to where you want to be so that your ultimate goal. How would you fill in those blanks? I want to create human connection. So that's very, very important. So measuring that will be important to me, whether it's an individual basis or bringing people together um, with a cause, with a mission, which, with a purpose. So get from this point where I am now so that I can get more work in the actual like realm of work that I want to be working on to have the end goal of my mission being fulfilled in at least a decent sized population of people's minds to change the way that they like, a, you know, address their um, local surroundings and their wildlife. Yeah, having having the freedom and the time to invest to have my own suit, definitely having that was so cute. I want to go from where I am now to being a recognizable artist by the end of this decade so that I don't look back and regret that I didn't even try. I just want to do what I love and be good at it, very good at it, and grow. I'm really so excited just to start, you know, and to fail and to feel and to grow and to live yeah. the life that I want to live, you know? So thank you, thank you, thank you to all the artists that helped in this market research. Um, everything that you, we've talked about has been incorporated into the Artists Going Digital program as it stands right now. Uh, really enjoyed myself and I'm just excited to be a, a part of all this.